Kusazang Kula and welcome back to Bhutan for our final trip around the country. We've seen so much since we first arrived in Paro. Look at your map as we trace our journey so far. Remember how we started in Paro Airport and made our way with our guide Sonam to see the black neck cranes in the centre of the map? Then we went to Tempo, the capital city, and went to the palace, the market and the archery game. Then after an overnight stay with Sonam and Yankee, we visited the giant Buddha before we returned to Paro to climb up to the tiger's nest high up in the mountains. I wonder what your favourite thing has been so far? Last time on our mountain hike we learned all about Buddhism and how many Bhutanese people follow the teachings of the Buddha. But today we're going to meet some Bhutanese Christians. We're heading east again across the country of Bhutan, through the mountains and valleys and trees. So let's jump into the car as Sonam takes us on our final trip. Even though we left early in the morning, it's taken most of the day to get here. But here we are in a quiet Bhutanese town. We've arrived at the house of Sangay and Dorji and their daughter Kiba. They're all there to greet us with a Kuzuzang Kula and then we head upstairs. Dorji offers us some butter tea, a hot drink which is very popular here. It's made from tea, butter and cream. As we sit together on the floor, Sangay begins to share how he became a Christian. He came from a Buddhist family and was always careful to spin prayer wheels as he passed them. He spent lots of time meditating or thinking about the Buddha's teachings. Then all that changed. One day he met a Christian who told him about Jesus. He learned that Jesus was God's son and that he came to die on the cross for our sins. Sangeb gave his life to Jesus and trusted him. He was so overjoyed and excited he went home to tell his family, but they were furious. They told him that he could no longer live with them, that he couldn't even come to visit them. His father said he should leave their village and go somewhere else to live because he had brought shame on them. None of his neighbours would want him living there now. He was a Christian. Imagine having to leave your home because you accepted Jesus. When someone is badly treated like this, even though they have done nothing to deserve it, we call it persecution. And there are lots of Christians being persecuted in Bhutan today because they follow Jesus. Christians here can lose their jobs, be badly treated by their families like Sange or even be put into prison. It's hard for us to understand why this happens. But do you see, Buddhism is so important to the people of Bhutan. Remember that the Bhutanese love their own way of doing things. They like to wear the go and kira because it's Bhutanese. They like to live in Bhutanese houses and they like to follow Buddhism. They believe that Christianity has no place in Bhutan. They think it's only for foreigners. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that God sent his son for people all over the world. It says that when Jesus returns, people from every country, from every part of the earth will join together to worship him in all their different languages. Jesus loves Bhutan and he died for the Bhutanese as well as for us. But as Sangay has told us, it's difficult to follow Jesus here. And so Christians must be willing to suffer for their faith. It's now dark and time for us to go to church. Sange, Dorji and Kiba all dress in their Bhutanese goes and kiras and we travel with them by car to the church in the next town. As Sange drives, Dorji tells us that the church here meets late at night so that they won't be discovered. The Bhutanese government don't allow Christians to gather and Christians can even be put in prison if they're found out. As the car stops, we look out. We've not arrived at a church building, but at another house. All churches in Bhutan meet in houses because they aren't allowed to have buildings of their own. This house belongs to the pastor. We'll call him Pastor T. We have to keep his real name a secret so that no one finds out he leads a church. We go up the stairs to a big open room at the top of the house. Everyone's sitting on the floor and the meeting is about to begin. Pastor T begins by praying for the country of Bhutan. He prays to God for the king and queen and that Bhutanese people will come to trust in Jesus. After the prayer, you notice a picture of the king and queen on the wall and see how many people here are wearing the traditional Bhutanese clothing of the Go and Kira. Just because these Christians no longer follow the Buddha, it doesn't mean they don't love their country. They love being Bhutanese 
and they love their king and queen, but they love Jesus most of all. Just then the music starts and everyone jumps to their feet, moving about and dancing as they sing. It's amazing that even though the Christians here can suffer so much in their faith, they are full of joy when they worship the Lord. They're so thankful to God for his forgiveness and to be free from all the rules and hopelessness of Buddhism. Even though it's hard to follow Jesus in Bhutan, they know that he is worth it. It's good for us to remember that too. After the singing, Pastor T opens the Bible. As you look around, you see that everyone here has a copy of the Bhutanese Bible, just like this one, so that they can read it in their own language. Dorothy tells us that Bhutan is one of the last countries in the world to have received a Bible of their own. Tonight, the church are studying a verse in the book of Hebrews. You can read along in English, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 3. It says, Remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Pastor T encourages the church to pray for Christians they know who are in prison and for those suffering in any way for following Jesus. That's really important for us to remember too, as we come to the end of our journey through Bhutan. Soon we will fly back home, but before we do, let's pray for the persecuted Christians in Bhutan. Father, thank you so much for our adventure through Bhutan. Please help us to remember what we've learned here, especially about the Christians who live here. Lord, please keep the church safe and please help the Christians um, to trust in you when times are difficult or when they're afraid. Father, we pray that you would help us to keep remembering and praying for Bhutan, not just for the Christians, but for many more people to learn about Jesus and to put their trust in him. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, after our last night with Sange, Dorji and Kiba, Sonam drives us back to Paro for our flight home. Take one last look out of the plane window at this beautiful land of mountains and forests. It's been quite a journey and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you so much for joining me. There are still some bits and pieces to finish on your map and the instructions will appear on the screen in a moment. Maybe when it's complete, you could stick it on your wall to remind you of our trip to Bhutan. Or you could show it to your friends and family or even take it to church to tell people all about our adventure. In fact, you could even send us a photograph of your completed map because we would love to see it. You can find out more about that on the back of your map. But best of all, we would love it if you use your map to pray for the people in Bhutan to know Jesus and to remember the Christians there who are persecuted. And who knows, maybe we'll meet again for another adventure. Until then, goodbye.